Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz and as ever, I am the IT Geek. We are back with, with another episode, the second episode in my Azure Arc Deep Dive series. This is a new series we've been doing, you know, VDI, Microsoft Cloud VDI for a while now, almost 40 odd episodes, but we're now doing something different. Still Azure Focus, but this is more Azure Arc. Um, and we're going we're gonna to, really done an overview so far, but really want to discuss how how do you choose the right arc service you know how how does that process go and what are the sort of different things you need to think about when looking at this is a two part because there's quite a bit to think about but without further ado let's get started so this is part one how, how to choose the right azure arc service because it's not uh it's not an easy one to kind of decide so it's a bit of an agenda for today Azure Arc offers so many different sort of services that are based on your existing IT infrastructure, essentially, and the sort of management needs that you have as an organisation. Before onboarding your resources to Azure Arc enabled servers, uh, you should really investigate the different Azure Arc offerings to sort of determine which best fits your requirements. And choosing the right Azure Arc service provides sort of the best possible inventory and management of your resources. So there's several ways you can you can sort of connect your existing Windows and Linux VMs with Azure Arc. We're going to be looking at those as we go along. In this episode, we're going to look at the major capabilities and the Azure Arc enabled servers. Uh, and each and each of these services um, extends that Azure control plane to your existing infrastructure, enables you to sort of use those Azure security, governance, compliance, management capabilities that we talked about in this sort of overview uh, in the last episode. So let's look at some of those major capabilities now. Okay, so um, we'll, we'll talk about major capabilities and we're going to focus a bit more on, on the Azure Arc enabled. So we we'll talk about the, uh, you've got the, the services on the left hand side there. So we've got Microsoft Defender for Cloud, Microsoft Sentinel, Azure Automation, Update Manager, Change Tracking and Inventory, Azure Monitor, VM Extensions, Extended Security Updates, Agentless Discovery and Inventory, and we've got Lifecycle and Power Cycle Operations. Uh, we've got some more on the next slide, so let's focus on these for now. And then as we go along on the table from, from left to right, we've got the different Azure Arc services there. So we've got enabled servers, and as you can see, they pretty much have all the capabilities except the last two, which is the agentless discovery and inventory and lifecycle and power cycle operations. We'll go on to Azure Arc enabled VMware. They support all the major capabilities for, for Azure, you know, for Azure um, integration. Uh, as do as a, as your Arc enable SC uh, VMM as well, um, but as your local again supports all of them and it has all the major capabilities apart from the agentless discovery and inventory. Um, as we go along, with some more sort of Azure Azure services integration. We've got so cell server VM provisioning, SQL Server enabled Arc, and then we've got Windows Server management again. Arc enabled servers. And we're talking about that Azure Arc feature. Um, it, it, support, it doesn't support self-serve VM provisioning, but it supports SQL Server enabled and Windows Server Management. Uh, Azure Arc enabled VMware, SC VMM and Azure Local um, has all the major capabilities that, that we have there. So again, not as many major capabilities for Azure Arc, but we can see VMware, SC VMM and Azure Local I do have more sort of capability in that area. So let's talk about general recommendations now when it comes to Azure Arc. Um, so, um, and it's about the right service to use and, and we have kind of the following that we need to really um, look at from a recommendations perspective. You know, if, if you're unsure about uh, which of these services to use, you can start with Azure Arc enabled servers, seems like the best place to go, and then add a resource bridge for can sort of additional management capabilities uh, later. Uh, and Azure Arc enabled servers allows you to connect servers um, Containing you know all of the types of VMs supported by other services and provides a wide range of capabilities such as your policy and monitoring, uh, and this is all while adding sort of resource bridge, uh, which can sort of extend those additional capabilities. Uh, you have regional availability as well, and this varies between Azure Arc services. So you may need to use Azure Arc enabled service if you have more of a more specialized version of Azure Arc, and if that's not available in your preferred region. Where your machine runs determines the best Azure Arc service to use. Organizations with sort of diverse infrastructure may end up using more than sort of one Azure Arc service. Uh, and this is all right. That's all, you know, no, no issue with that. That's not against best practice or anything. The core set of features remains the same no matter sort of which Azure Arc service you're going to use. So if we look at some of these recommendations, you know, if, if, 
your machine is v um, VMware, VM, not running on AVS, it's recommended to connect Azure with you know VMware vSphere to connect to get that complete set of Azure capabilities. Or you can use Azure Arc Enable Service to use Azure Services only. With AVS, um, if your machine runs on AVS, use Azure Arc Enabled VMware vSphere for Azure VMware solutions. And if your VM is managed by SC VMM or System Center Virtual Machine Manager, um, you can connect Azure with uh, Azure Arc Enabled SC VMM, and that gives you the complete Azure capability, or Azure Arc Enabled Service just for Azure services. And then if you're on Azure Local, if your VM's on Azure Local, including the ones that are managed by SC VMM, there's obviously the Azure Local capability integration. And for physical servers or VMs or other hypervisors or a lot of a cloud provider, uh, Azure Arc Enable Service is probably the best way to go. So let's talk about some of those um, Azure Arc Enable Server capabilities now. Um, so it lets you manage Windows and Linux, uh, physical servers and virtual hosted servers outside of Azure on your corporate network or other cloud providers. When connecting your machine with Azure Arc Enable Servers, you can perform various operational functions similar to sort of native uh, Azure as well. So you can govern, you can assign sort of Azure automation machine configurations to audit settings within, within the machine. And you can utilize Azure policy um, and Azure policy pricing guidelines are available and you need to really understand those as well. Uh, we've talked about protect, you can safeguard non-Azure servers with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint integrated through sort of Defender for Cloud. That includes sort of threat detection, vulnerability management and protective security monitoring as well. And you can utilize Microsoft Sentinel for collecting security alerts and sort of correlating uh, them with other sort of data sources. And, and in this in this series, we're not really gonna look at how to configure that. That's kind of outside the scope. This is more Azure Arc, how to integrate services within, you know, how to integrate your resources outside of Azure Arc and, and, and um, open up these capabilities. Talk about configure. You can, you can apply Azure automation for managing tasks using PowerShell and sort of Python run books. You can use change tracking and inventory for assessing configuration changes, which we'll be looking at more closely. You can utilize Update Manager for handling OS updates, perform post deployment configuration and automation tasks using supported Azure Arc, enable server VM extensions. Then you've got monitoring, so you can utilize VM Insights for monitoring OS performance and discovering some application components. Uh, you can collect log data as well, such as sort of performance data and events through the log analytics agent storing it in sort of log analytics workspaces. And finally, we'll talk about protected extended security updates, so ESUs, uh, at scale for your Windows Server 2022, 2012 R2 machines running on vCenter managed estates as well. So again, a lot of capabilities for Azure Arc enabled servers. Okay. We're going to do some VM onboarding. In this demo, we're going to onboard a um, AWS VM. So we'll be doing, well, actually, we're going to onboard AWS um, resources. So we're onboarding the AWS account, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll do some VM onboarding as well with Windows in the one after in the episode after this. Um, so let's jump into the demo. Hello, welcome back. We're in the Azure portal in Azure Arc again, and we actually want to go, I want to onboard, I know I said onboard a VM, but I actually want to onboard AWS. Um, so we're going to go to multi-cloud connectors, and here's where I want to create one here. And I've got I've got my AWS account here, we've got some EC2 instance already of Linux, we've configured cloud formation, I'll explain why that's important. So I'm going to do it in my subscription. Um, let's create a new resource group called... Um, IT Geek hyphen Arc. Choose capitals. Okay, so we're going to put all our Arc stuff in here. Now let's give this a name IT Geek hyphen AWS. That's our AWS connector. Uh, we'll be in Australia East. So here, we'll just have, have we got an organization, have we got a single, I've got a single account because it's just a demo one. So here's where we actually need to put the ID. Uh, let's copy that across. Put that in there. Go next. Okay, so um, we need to add solutions we'd like to use with this connector. We want to do inventory and we want to do arc onboarding as well. So um, let's add that. Got all the different services there. Three, three, two, one. 
So here we can select all the different services. We're going to enable all of them. Um, and this is how often it's going to sync every hour. Any resource filtering. So again, you can filter out any regions you want. Let's click save on that. And here's our composer. Add as your arc to use as your management services on your EC2 instances. We want to do that because we've got some EC2 instances. Um, so here we can choose any sort of proxy server. We have our connectivity method. We're going to leave it on public endpoint because it's already there. Again, how often do we want to sync and then any resource filtering as well. Now, if we do have a proxy URL, we can put it in there, which we don't. So let's save that. Click on next. So this is where we actually need to download a copy of our um, AWS cloud formation template. Um, so we've already, I've already actually created the stack and this is downloading, there we go. Um, so I've actually already downloaded that. Let's go to, let's actually download that. Okay, so the template's there. Okay, so I had a bit of, a, I had a bit of an issue trying to, uh, which I've not had before, which is strange. I've done this quite a few times, I've never had this problem. But I had a bit of trouble when I downloaded the template, trying to use the template. So what I did was I actually copied the code and I created a stack from scratch. So just to go back a step, if it lets me, um, I specified the stack details, I created it, gave it a name, uh, copied and pasted the JSON over to the template. Um, and it's got me to this stage now, configuring stack options. I'm just gonna yeah, use delete option, which you need to do. And then, um, so acknowledge that uh, and go on next. And uh, let's just review and we should be able to submit this now. So once that's created, we'll go back and make sure that we follow the, the next step so we can get this AWS account added to our ARC. So here we can see now we're in multi-cloud connectors and that is connected um, on the cloud formation stack. It's actually still creating the stack. Um, however, what will happen is um, that will start importing resources and eventually we will see our AWS VM here. Um, so what I'll try and do is before the next video, I'll try and get that in there. We can just see that. Um, I also want to try add some vCenter stuff as well, but um, in the next episode, I'll try get my um, on-premises lab. Um, I'm going to borrow a, a colleague of mine, George. Shout out to George. See if he can carry enough to let me uh, see if I can get a VM on his um, on his lab that he has on-premises. So then I'll be able to add a Windows VM in there. Uh, so yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a choppy, a bit of a choppy lab there. Just had some issues, which is normal when you're working in IT and tech, right? Um, but we've been able to add the AWS account. Hopefully you understood how we did that. Um, so again, I've just recently passed 40k subscribers, which is a huge, huge achievement for me. Never never thought that day would come. Um, but yeah, I just want to thank everyone for their support. Um, if you're not, so, you know, I've, I've checked on my analytics and there's a lot of people who aren't subscribed that are watching my channel. But if you're not subscribed, why not? Get hitting that subscribe button. You know, I don't, I want to build my channel for the end of the year to 50k if I can. Um, and the current trajectory, that's looking likely. Um, so yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe. I've got loads of useful links of my member-only resources, all my exam topics in the in the description as well. So thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.